Tuesday, January 11, 2011. I'm at the home of Mr. Curtis. He is a person. Hey, you there? Come in. Okay. Yeah, this is the whistleblower, the federal whistleblower. Okay. At the New York skyline, go ahead. Bang! That's what I'm talking about. Ooh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We getting deep here. What's this? Oh, just some, um, you know. Whoa! Part of, history. Whoa. Part of history. Part of history. You go ahead, brother. You go it's ahead. Sad, but it's part of history. Part of history. So this is the big Watusi man, Dingo Mix Super Field Negro. Yeah. We can see you're not, you're not one of the impoverished, downtrodden. Who's like one of these guys right here? Oh no, no. See? No. That's Martin Luther King. That's Malcolm X. Elijah Muhammad. Frederick Douglass. All right here. And then this brother right here is what? Bang! Got the chains on his brain when these guys do not. Those guys are out there and this guy is not. And that slave castle's door is busted and the key's right there. And he still ain't walking away from that. Scared to leave. Damn! Scared to leave. And that's my guy right here. That's my guy right here, Malcolm X. That's him right here. Well, let me see what else we got here. But, oh my. This is the one! Yeah, yeah. That's the one you were asking me about. If that story was true about it, yes, that's it. That's what you, you, you had given me a copy of this? And I took it to the congressman's office. Yes. And you met with Ida Smith. I was there. I was an eyewitness. Bang, we're going to have to send it to Mr. Juan Cuba at the White House. Sure, sure. Okay, and I've got a letter from the Justice Department, and I've been trying to show people, you know, what exactly. And people of authority, because the newspapers have been, they don't want to print my story no more about the redlining scheme that I took to the congressman's office and they did all kinds of things calling me crazy, defamed me the VA gave me a whole bunch of medication which in fact I didn't need as a chemical restraint so I gotta do what I gotta do but I did speak uh, to Mr. Juan Cuba and it's time for me to now and the last time I spoke to him was about getting those books to him Okay. And now those books have disappeared at the congressman's office. Wow. So we can actually send them this. But what I wanted to do right now was if you could please take me back. Take me back to what happened for you have taken these pictures. Hold this for me. Of this hangsman's noose. That was when, this was in the... This was found, um, it was in the locker room at the VA. At the, okay, the Veterans Administration what? St. Albans, New York. St. Albans, New York, Veterans Administration, motor pool locker room? Yes, correct. Okay, and how long was this hanging there? Um, I don't know, I walked in January 25th, 2008, and I saw it. But, um, now, January 25th, 2008, and that's when you first saw that? Correct. And it last, and stayed there for how long? No, they took it down immediately after that, after um, the police were notified. Oh, so you called the police after that. There was a police report. Yes, correct. The police never called the press on this? No. When you took it to the congressman's office, did they call the press? What happened when you went to Ida M. Smith after I turned you over to her? Um, she spoke to me a few times about it, but nothing amounted out of it. I didn't get any feedback, I didn't get any change, um, and they told me that the federal government says it's legal to hang them. They said it's not... Ida Smith told you said that the federal government said it's legal to put a hangman's noose. They said that they're not illegal, but a noose is not against the law by the federal government, but a swastika is considered a felony hate crime, but a noose is not considered a hate crime. And Ida M. Smith told you this? Um, yeah, in the discussion, she was like, there was nothing she could do about it. Okay. And do, are you aware that she ever contacted anybody at the Veterans Administration? Um, I believe she spoke to the union. Outside of that, I don't think um, it went much. And then what happened to you? Um, nothing. They offered to um, transfer me to Brooklyn, Manhattan, 
In other words, get you out of the St. Albans VA. Yes. Did they talk to you about who put that there? Did anybody ever ask you who put that Hanksman's noose in the locker room at the Brooklyn VA? I mean at the St. Albans VA on January 25th, 2008. No. No. Do you know who did it? Um, I don't know who did it, but I know whose coat rack it was hung on. I found it. It was hanging on one of my co-workers. Um, co what was the name of the person's coat rack it was hanging on? Yes. Frank Castellano. Frank Castellano. Oh, correct. What happened to Mr. Frank Castellano after you reported this? Um, actually, he got a promotion from work leader to supervisor. And they wanted me to work <laughs> under him after that. And when I told them that they were adding insult to injury, they asked me, they told me when I told them I didn't want to work under his supervision after the incident, yes. they told me that they can transfer me to Brooklyn, Staten Island, or Miami, which I refuse to go because I like St. Louis. I've been there 20 years, and I feel that I should not be transferred. Now, were there other instances with Mr. Castellano or other Caucasian gentlemen at the Brooklyn VA Hospital Motor Pool that would lead you to think that this there is an there is an embedded racist environment in that motor pool. Yes, I, I would think so. Because, Elaborate, yeah. please. Well, um, a brief incident to me was happened about roughly about 15 years ago. I came in there as a motor pool operator, as a motor vehicle operator. And shortly after that, two Caucasians came in there, and they were made grade eights, and I was made a, I was a grade seven. And when I brought it to their attention, saying, "How come I'm a seven and they're eights?" They told me when I um, get an ACDR license, they'll make me a grade eight. Immediately, within two to three seconds, I reached in my pocket, hand them a class A CDL license. And they kept promising me to give me the grade, and they never did. So there's at the time there were three tractor operators, which me being one, the first one, mm -hmm. and then the two Caucasians that came after me. So it was you had more grade. time in grade, more time in service than they did. Yes, and they were made eight when they walked in the door. Okay, and I was never. Here it is, 17 years later, and I'm still a seven. So it looked like you sound like somebody owed federal government owe you some money. Yeah, with some interest. And back with pay. some interest and back pay. Yeah, 17 years. Uh, pay a little pain and suffering, a little humiliation and degradation. And then this is what I'm rewarded with. And Six bang! Minutes. That's what you're, you, you, you know Frank Castellano did it, don't you? I would surmise that it does belong to him. You suspect him? Yes. Now, tell me about the other guy who put a little hangman's noose in the hands of that female six months ago at the Brooklyn VA. You can tell it. You're a federal whistleblower. You should be protected. And we're sending this to the White House. Well, um, another co-worker of mine, I heard um, they had an incident too where somebody hand, personally handed them a noose. Person hand, so a white guy handed a black woman a, black a hangman's woman. noose. Yeah. And he ended up getting fired. Yes. And, she, and not right now she's on leave uh, with mental distress. Well, what happened to you? How come you ain't all shell-shocked? I am shell-shocked. It's a challenge each and every day to go to work. Matter of fact, it's um, hard talking about it, even like right now. Um, I want to stop talking about it right now. Did you go see some people, man? Yeah, I did. But I can't get into your medical records, yeah. man. I can't, I'm not going to get into that with you. Now, why don't you tell me your name? Tell me your name, and Give me, give me the name. My I got to have a name. Curtis, you work at the Brooklyn VA? St. Albans. St. Albans VA? Correct. And you've been there 20 years? 22 years in April. 22 years in April? Yes. And you're a whistleblower? Correct. Are you afraid something's going to happen to you? Um, yeah, I am. I am. I am. On a day-to-day -day basis, just going to work with the atmosphere and just all of the stuff that goes on and transpires. Oh, don't talk to him. He's a troublemaker. And so they've been slandering your name. Correct. You've been profiled. Correct. As a troublemaker. For standing up for my rights of um, not wanting to see a noose in a federal facility. And you went to your congressman's office and they blew what? 